In the seventh and final learning objective, we're going to look at determinants of bond yields. What determines the price of the bond? What determines the yield of a bond? Uh, what what uh, factors in the environment are going on? Basically, uh, the term determinants of bond yields are composed of the elements in the Fisher effect. What determines the yield on a bond? Again, essentially the Fisher effect, and it is reflected in the term structure. So within the bond, uh, yield, there is a real return, an inflationary return, and that little RH thing that we don't want to forget about, the uh, interest rate risk component. So three different components in this term, what we'll call a term structure of interest rates, relationship between uh, total interest rates on default, free, pure, discount securities, and TTM. So on the y-axis, you're going to have uh, rates, and on the x-axis, you're going to have time to maturity. And you would expect, one would expect this term structure most times to be upwardly sloping because we would expect uh, lower rates for shorter term bond instruments and we would expect a little bit more uh, pay for some of that interest rate risk going forward out and, and, and some inflation protection out into the future. So if we look at the term structure, most times you look at it and you will see it to be upward sloping. And you see it's comprised of a real rate an inflation premium, and an interest rate risk premium. Uh, longer term rates, typically greater than short term rates in this upward sloping. Very occasionally when interest rates are an indicator, interest rates might be headed downward, you'll very, very rarely see this term structured slope downward. Um, so in this case, short term rates are paying more than long term rates. And again, I think I've seen that maybe two or three times in my financial career, not, not very, very often. Uh, three components, real rate of interest, little r, compensation we demand for uh, the use of our money. Um, also an inflationary component, so the portion of uh, the total interest rate that represents compensation for expected future inflation. And finally, that little RH component, we want some interest rate risk compensation. And that's what makes up the term structure. Uh, this is simulated by, uh, that's a simulation of the Treasury yield curve, which is a plot of yields on Treasury uh, notes and bonds relative to maturity. Again, typically upward sloping. I've seen it again uh, a couple of times downward sloping. Uh, appears in the Wall Street Journal daily, pretty much on a daily basis. And this reflects the term structure of interest rates. And typically uh, shorter term rates are lower than longer term rates because we want payment for those three components that are reflected in the uh, term structure. Uh, determinants of bond yield. What make up bond yield? Well, if we have a corporate bond, we have some extra compensation we require or desire. We want default risk premium. So uh, we want a part of our total interest rate to be comprised of extra compensation for the possibility of default on the bond. So a corporation might default on it if they go bankrupt and cannot pay. Uh, they run through a difficult stretch financially. They may, uh, we want some protection from that in the form of a default risk premium. We also want a taxability premium. Corporate bonds are taxable. And so we want a little bit extra in the return to help us compensate for that taxability requirement. And also liquidity premium. Bonds are not always liquid, not always sold every day uh, for that particular corporation. So we want a little bit of liquidity premium, pay us a little bit extra for that um, impact. In summary, in session seven, we looked at seven learning objectives. First of all, you should know how to value a bond now using the one bond valuation equation. We've looked at key features of bonds, what makes up a bond, um, and who rates bonds, learning objective number three. You should know that by now. Uh, what are the various types of bonds you may encounter in your daily lives, and where do we buy bonds? Learning objective number five. Um, how does inflation and how do inflation and interest rates affect the price of the bond using the Fisher effect? And also using that same effect, what determines the yield on a bond? Key determinants of bond yield. I hope you've enjoyed session number seven of Introduction to Finance.